<laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, Hi. My name is Josh, and I'm I'm, I'm I want to I want to meet y'all and get your names. But uh, for right now, I just want to let, let you know uh, uh, that Peter and I were graduate students at UT. And, uh, Thanks. UT. UT. UT's, UT's great. Yes. You probably all know where the UT Stadium is. Have y'all been to the Have y'all been to the UT Stadium? Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest ones in the, in the world, right there. Um, what what you all what y'all may not know is just a few blocks from that stadium, just about four blocks from that stadium. There's hundreds of research labs filled with scientists studying all kinds of things. For instance, uh, the largest laser in the whole world is right there, four blocks in, in the basement under the physics building there. There's people that study that. There's other, there's other scientists that study about evolution. There's other scientists that study about energy. There's, and um, we, and we, we're very excited about like, what we want to study. That's why we're, we're graduate students. And so we, we thought, um, even though we were excited about it, um, we spent too much time in the lab and not enough time in the community um, seeing what other people think about science. See, we're only talking to each other about science, and we already like science, so we can all agree. But it's not as—it's more interesting to talk to people in the community. So uh, that's why um, we work, or work, talk to Miss Harrington, and she's letting us talk to you because I want to find out what y'all think about science. So y'all are in the, the uh, this is the, the advanced science class, right? Yeah. So you guys, you know, everyone here is really like science. What what do y'all like about science? Experiment. Experiment. Experiments? Okay, I heard an experiment over here too. Is, what else do people, does, do people like about science? Um, I like chemicals. Which one? Chemicals. Chemicals are cool. I like the microscopes. Do you like what? The microscopes. Microscopes. Nice. <laughs> You're going to like my presentation when I, when I, when I, when I present. My, I'm going to come back to my presentation. I'm going to bring the microscope for you all. So that's good. So this is, this is easy. Y'all y'all like science as well. Um, but what I heard here was, um, what is a graduate student? So if you want to be a, a scientist, then you need to go to graduate school. And um, what is a graduate student? I didn't know until I started graduate school. So I can't, no, no, some of y'all might already know. Can someone tell me what a, a graduate student is? Okay, uh, that, that's all right. I didn't know either. I, I think about it in this way, like y'all, that in the old days, like um, if if um, there was someone in this, if you're living in a small town, there was a place. There's probably someone that made shoes really well. There's a good shoemaker, so everyone knows that he makes the shoes that are the most comfortable, and he, he's and so if you want to become a shoemaker, but you don't know how to make shoes, what would you do? Yeah. I'll look it? it up. You, you can you can look it up. Uh huh. You, so the way the way, I, the way I look at it is you would you would talk to the guy who makes the shoes and you would see if you could work for them and be an apprentice. Y'all have heard the apprentice? What apprentice? Yeah, like the TV show. The appre apprentice is where where you train under an expert to become an expert yourself. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, so for, for science, what, what you're doing as a graduate student is you're training under an expert, and then at the, when, you, when you graduate, when these experts decide you graduate and you get these letters PhD, then, then that, may, that means that you're an expert in the field that you study. But that's only that's because you're training under somebody. It's like being an apprentice. So uh, Peter and I, we were both very interested in how cells work. So, so we, um, we're training under expert scientists that, that, that work with cells, and not um, as, an, as, a, as a one example. So, does anyone know what a PhD stands for? Mm. It's surprising, actually. So, what it actually stands for is philosophy doctor. Isn't that strange? It's philosophy. It's not a technical degree. It's a philosophy degree. So, what does it mean if it's a philosophy degree? It means it's about an ideas. It's about problems. That's what, it's not about the technical. And, and the, 
Who here can solve problems? Me. Does anybody? Yeah, solve problems. We, all, we have problems that we come up when we figure out what, how to do it better. Scientists, they're doing the same thing as you. They're just, they're, that they, they have a problem that they want to find the answer to, and that's what they're solving. So, except they just get to do it full time. They get the paycheck for it. So, um, that, I think, for me, that's a real exciting proposition. Would you all think it could be interesting to make money solving problems? You know, if, if you like to do that kind of thing, it could be fun. I also want to let you know, I'm not here to proselytize and just say, you know, all should be scientists, because you should all, you should do what's in your heart, you know, and you should do what, what you get inspired to do and what you do the best. But we're here to, to let you know that, like, for us, we've made the decision of what we like to do, and that's science. So we, so, so we decided to, to, to work at it. So we, all, we wanted to just be available to answer questions to, to, for y'all on what it's like maybe to be a, to be a scientist, what it's, uh, what it's like uh, that. So if, if it's something that you're thinking about, then you could get you know, information back from us. Would, would it be interesting to see a lab in UT to see some research? Would, would it would like to, to go to UT maybe for a field trip or something? Yes. yes. So we, we'd, yes. Like to, we'd like to be able to somehow do that. We haven't figured out exactly how we are, but uh, my friends and I at UT, we'd love to have you come see our labs. We'd love to tell you about our stuff and show you our stuff. So, um, there's, but there, there's some things that, that we want to get from you is we want to know you know, what do you, th what do you think about science? Do you, do you think science is important? Or? It's very important, because well, then, like, cause like, we know how our kids are going to turn out. Mm -hmm. Because what they're going to do like. Uh-huh. So, genetics, <laughs> genetics, yeah, that's important. And if they're going to be healthy, and, and those kinds of things. Um, oh, you, and how our body works. How our body works. That's really good. Um, so what? So since we're just getting to, so since we haven't met each, so our friends want to come here and meet you all. So we think to start it off, we'll just have an introduction. So the introduction would be us presenting our PhD thesis to y'all. And so we talked about what a PhD is and a graduate student is. What's a PhD thesis? That's just the research that a graduate student does. So you could think about it as when we were talking about the shoemaker, our PhD thesis would be our first pair of shoes, our first real problem that we tried to, to solve as a, sci as a scientist. So that's what um, the, our friend, the, that's what we at UT were going to think was going to be one next week and then one the next week where they're presenting the, the research that they're doing. Um, well, a thesis is basically like a really long essay, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a really long essay, and it's describing how there was a certain problem that people didn't know how something worked, and then you did some experiments. You went through the scientific method, which I see you already know there, and you find your results, and then you write it up, and now, now anybody can read it and know the answer to that. And then, so that's the thesis. That's the thesis. Um, some questions that, that it might be interesting for y'all to know. Are you curious how long it takes to, to get a PhD? Is it four, four years? years? Four years. Okay. Um, it, it kind of varies. Four is good. But you, you go to college at, after high school for four years, and then you, you, then you sign back up for school, and then you take some more. What do you, Seven years. Seven might be a little closer for some people. Um, it kind of varies a little bit because you're trying to solve a question that you don't know the answer. So you also don't know how long it's going to take you to get the answer. But generally, after you're done with college and you go to graduate school, you're in graduate school from like four to six years. Some some of them some some programs are even longer because you have to learn a whole lot. Like theoretical physics, you have to learn so much math that you generally to take eight years. Um, but the good thing about being a scientist, is even though it takes a long time, is that from the moment you decide, then you get to solve problems for a living. So even though we're still working on our thesis, it's still our day-to-day -day life is, is thinking about problems that we find interesting. So it's not like 
you have to just labor and have a lot, and things aren't fun, and then you get a reward at the end. Uh huh. Is it being a scientist? Can you go do regular things, like go shopping? And Absolutely. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good that, question. Like <laughs> right, that's a, that's a good question. So when we think about scientists, what do we usually think about? That's another reason why I wanted to come here to talk to y'all. What, what do you think about? So you, she's thinking like, you know, scientists are these kind of eccentric people that you don't see no, them like doing regular things. They just are in the lab. <laughs> it's totally not true. You, you'll see, you'll, uh, we'll show you because when our friends present, present their thesis, you'll, you'll see that they're just regular people like you. They like to have a lot of fun. They do a lot of fun things on the side. Peter Friend is really good at guitar. He spends a lot of time doing music and stuff like that. We, we have hobbies. I bathe. I can say <laughs> you know, that. And so that's another thing that, that in movies you kind of see a funny version of the scientist sometimes. You see like the scientist is like either, you know, a mad scientist and try and take over the world and power hungry, or you just see him as a... Yeah. Or you can see a scientist that's just real geeky and doesn't understand regular people and this thing, but that's not true either. What did you say? I'm speaking English. Oh, yes, I am a scientist. <laughs> Um, so, so uh, I was thinking there's there's different categories of science, and I was just curious in this class, like what what kind of science people are most interested in. Uh, is anyone interested in astronomy, in the space, mostly in space? Yeah, space. Uh huh. Yeah, a lot of. Awesome pictures. Yeah, it has like this thing with a lot of colors. It's like a cloud, but it has stars and colors. Oh, So we got a lot of people like space. Did you know at UT they have a telescope there that you can go use? You can go see it. They have it open to the public uh, at least once a month. And so if y'all are interested, I'm going to be coming back through with all the different speakers, but I'll let you all know in, in some evening that it's free. You could go there and you could look if you're interested in space. Um, so, what we wanted, what we want to get from you, we want to share with you what enthusiast, what's it, what we're enthusiastic about. But we want to get from you something. I wasn't telling you everything that we wanted to to get uh, from you. Another, well, another thing is Peter and I and our friends were sitting around and we're talking about our research, our PhD thesis, and I really like mine. I think it's interesting. Peter really thinks his is interesting. Friend Nick really thinks his is interesting, and we can't convince each other whose is the most interesting. So we thought we'd ask y'all awesome. whose is the most interesting, and then y'all will decide. And then after all the presentations are done this year, Someone will be the winner, and they're going to be they have the most interesting research, and y'all are going to decide for us <laughs> who is that. So can you help us out with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. These cool. guys definitely have a lot of opinions. So Good. I hope you have opinions. We want to hear from you. Questions. Uh, we're going to give we're going to give you these scorecards to when uh, when they have the presentation, so you can write down how how easy it was to understand, how interesting it was to you, how it, how it enthusiastic and we also want to hear from you what you think is the most interesting you know because we if there's something that you find the most interesting we can give you some more information about it later so that's good so it's just kind of letting you know what we're going to be doing we're going to come back next week I think in the week after and then we'll be back again next semester so y'all can uh, help us out and, and and ask us questions and let us know how we can help you, you know, how we could, what would be useful for you, for us at UT, what, how, how could we help you either with pursuing your ideas, or how could we help you like make connections with people at UT that, that could set you up where you could do research maybe in high school, would, would that be interesting to y'all? Because there's actually plenty, plenty of, 
high school students that are at UT and working in labs. So y'all should, if that's something you like, you should think about that. And we, and that's what we wanted to do is, is hear what's interesting to you so that we could perhaps set, set you up to, to do some research and experiments um, when you get a little older. So if you have any, y'all have any questions for me? Are you a photo? What's that? Are you a photo? Are you a photo real? Did you know. say what you, you haven't said anything about yours. I haven't said anything about mine. If you wanted, I, I, I study the nervous system, nerves, like brain, like how they brain. Nice. But I yeah. study. Yeah. Oh, no, my brain. Can you tell me what my brain research works? I can, unfortunately. I study the, the brains of worms. So <laughs> I can't well, tell I, you much about, about I presented your brain. my research at an astrobiology conference. Does that make me an expert on UFOs? Yeah, no, he, he, he presents yeah, his know. research. Do you know what astrobiology? Tell them what astrobiology is. Well, astrobiology you know what is, would generally be the study of life in space. Can and I live in space? In while? <laughs> well, people live in space right now. As For to whether real? you can live in space. Um, Do they have refrigerators? Well, there's a, guy, there's a guy named Richard Garriott who lives in Austin who paid something like $3 million to go to space. So it used to be you had to be an astronaut to go to space, but now if you have a few million dollars, you can go if you want to. So save your pennies. Uh, you gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I you want to go. <laughs> they have bathing facilities, but not a bathtub because the water would float out. Something like that, I think. Yeah. Aliens? I suspect that there is probably life elsewhere in the universe. I would tend to doubt that they've been here, but it's possible. They're ballistic humans. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice word. Ballistic. Yeah, they go like crazy on you. Who are you? Ballistic man. <laughs> 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 All right, any real questions? <laughs> Someone besides Cindy? No, wait. Do, do brains are in worms, right? Yes. <laughs> They have, brain, they have they have little they have little brains. They have they still have to do certain things. They have to eat and move around. Uh -huh. Are the worms brains are are they like similar? They're actually in a, in a yes in a way like the parts that make up the worm brains are pretty similar to the parts that make up our brains. We just have way way more cells and so are more complicated and can think much more a bunch of bigger things than the worm, but each cell is more or less the same. That's why we study the worms, because we can learn about ourselves. How small is the brain? Can we see it? Yes, with a microscope. That's all? What if I held it in my hand? Can I see it? it yeah, you can see the worm. Uh, it's very no, small. No, the brain. The worm brain? No, you can not How can you see it? With a microscope. <laughs> Is it true that uh, Earth has more heart, more than a heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really good. Right. That's good. Um, I don't study earthworms, but I think it has four. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when I when I when I present my project on worms, I'll bring a bring a microscope and you can you can see the worms. And, uh, it's pretty amazing watching them move. Yeah, anything they can get their hands on, or mm -hmm. pictures they would love. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I know y'all had a full day. I appreciate you making the time for us, and we're excited. And are y'all excited? Yes. Okay. Good.